anointing rest on you this role in the name of jesus i don't know where you are but i pray may that grace now let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension in the name of jesus christ welcome to christocentric message on this channel you are going to get soul lifting messages faith-based content prayer drills and videos that would help you grow spiritually remember to subscribe to the channel like the video you are about to watch and comment on it stay blessed heart is ready to receive. Lift your voice and pray. Speak to me tonight. You are making men make me too. You are empowering men. Empower me also. You are showing men your favor and lifting men mysteriously. Lord, let me be part of that program. You are recruiting a mighty army that will shake the nations of the earth. Would you grant by your spirit that I be a major part of this move of the spirit. You are pruning men. Let my tears not stop you. You are revealing yourself to men. Show me your glory in a new dimension. You are turning lives around. This is the place of encounter.
Spirit of the living God, you call this place Koinonia, the place of supernatural encounters, the place of signs, wonders, the place where you are birthing for yourself a bride, you are birthing for yourself an army, you are birthing for yourself men of destiny. Lord, we just want to take our time to acknowledge and to thank you for being part of what you are doing for the benefits and the blessings of alignment. Tonight, we wade away every distraction and we decree and declare that you are anointing your spirit, the ministry of angels, find expression unrestrained. We thank you. We bless you. Give us encounters. We have not come to waste our time. We have not come to fulfill a ritual. We have not come to listen to a man. We have come like Jacob to the place where we will see your face. And Jacob said, I will not let you go until you bless me. And he said, what is your name? And he says, Jacob. He said, thou shalt no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince, you have power with God and prevail. The Bible says he touched his thigh. And the sun arose and he called the name of the place Peniel. And he says, I have seen God face to face and my life is spared. Give us revelations, O oh God. Let the spirit of revelation through the world, through visions, through encounters that while you are speaking oh god let your word become images let your word become pictures and let it glue upon our spirits until we become what you are revealing travail and God is birthing a lot of things we must be very sensitive don't be careless with your discernment when you come to the house of God like this let your spirit be open the devil will try to distract you with your challenges whatever just throw them away and let your heart be fixed on him in the name of Jesus Christ thank you I just want to say a few things before before we get to the word tonight um, I thought of recent at the faithfulness of God over my life and over this ministry and um, I've had to fight tears because of the overwhelming blessings of God I receive text messages every day, our lines are jammed every day, people calling from around the world, expressing their gratitude for what the word of God in and through this ministry is doing in their lives, the miracles, the signs, the wonders, 
um, you have to be evil to pretend like the things that are said don't matter the 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 level i mean quite frankly let me tell you sincerely we don't get to hear up to one tenth of the transforming stories that happen in the lives of people what what we receive here on friday is is just a token because we're constrained by time and then because not everybody who would want to share is available here and um, I really really am touched and then to know how how easy God has made this thing particularly for me I am deeply indebted to him you see let me tell you this when when you honestly sit down and talk with a man of God who fears and loves God he may end up crying because of the pain is a difficult thing to head a ministry to run a ministry to mentor and to teach people there's no guarantee anywhere that they will be changed there is no guarantee that they will even listen to you and so when people give you their attention and commit their lives it's much more than they are liking you there is a grace there is an anointing are we together i am I am very very touched the workers in this ministry who have made my job easy you don't see me running around here to verify what are they doing and I acknowledge I talk with pastors I have colleagues in ministry I have senior colleagues fathers mentors and I know how difficult they will tell you it's easy to preach but the system to make your message heard and understood is very difficult are we together now and I don't want to take lightly and take for granted um, what the Lord is doing in this ministry and through my life and um, I honestly want to appreciate everyone I more so want to acknowledge and appreciate everyone listen carefully and I'm saying this sincerely everyone who is genuinely part of this vision you know I hope you know that no one is obligated to believe in you are you aware of that that there is no yoke on anybody to believe whatever you said God told you it's a difficult thing to be trusted to be believed in enough for people to commit their loyalty and their lives if God is not ashamed to declare his vulnerability to men then no man of God should Every time I come down from the car and I see people here, despite the weather, despite you see some sitting in the grass, hanging around, there are people inconveniencing themselves right now from around the world, listening. Do they have to do this? Am I the only man of God? And, and uh, you know, the most touching part of it is when people go out of their way to travel from other cities. Some of you are seated here now, all through the week. People have come from within the country, from outside the country, inconvenience themselves. You don't want to know the sacrifice that people make week in, week out. Some of them are men of God too. They have their own ego, they have their own pedigree. And they drop that thing aside to come and sit down, to listen, to be blessed, to be mentored. Please, if God ever gives you influence, value it. Is God helping somebody tonight? If God ever makes men to say, I will follow you as you follow Christ, value it. These are the things that when I see sometimes I'm so moved, I'm so touched. Sometimes you see me just sit there and um, I just say, Lord, thank you. You don't have to do this. Many men of God do not have the privilege of being loved across all regions usually there is one region that loves you and then another region that persecutes you harshly with a level of hatred that can almost neutralize the love that you have but god has made this different in my life and this ministry there is no region i have gone to that i'm not genuinely loved it's not normal i go to the east and i'm greatly loved i go to the west the south 
here the middle belt in fact the bible you know the bible says a prophet has is not without honor except in his hometown but the case is very different here i am deeply loved even within this place and i truly 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 value it hallelujah there are very few men of god and i tell you this very few men of god who operate in the level and the dimension of the gift of the spirit and a ministry like this who are not openly persecuted you don't work in there is a level of the spirit that if you walk above just get set to be in in everybody's negative book you see that but of course not everybody will love you and believe in you but let's be honest let's be honest even those who probably if at all talk against me they don't really hate me some are just ignorant or maybe intimidated or maybe frustrated there are few people who are honestly truly speaking you say i mean i hate this person and i i want us to 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 understand this i want you to know that i value and appreciate everyone i really do you know men of god we are proud people and most times we act as if with or without the members um, we are all right it's not true it's not true it's just a psychological way of trying to let the members not take advantage of us but i cannot come here and speak to cheers no matter how anointed i am you are the seal of my apostleship it's 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 it's, it's really thank you thank you very much you truly are it's amazing only God knows how many battles I would have fought that some of you fought it and won and kept quiet. Are we together? I saw that grace in Billy Graham. The grace that makes a man accepted in every region. The only man of God that preached in North Korea. I saw that same grace in Reinhard Bonke. It was one of the things that took me to Joss to passionately. I, I don't want to carry the truth and have to be explaining to everybody. Do you know how painful it is to be misunderstood? There is a grace. There are spirits that are responsible for misunderstanding a man and an anointing. Did you know something as little as this? Just this. Someone alone can say this is occultic power. This is demonic this. It, there is a spirit that blinds the eyes of people so that no your good is evil spoken of are we together you can sow a seed to someone they'll say you are trying to bribe the family are, are you not seeing am i the only ones there are people that have the, they are sincere but never believed they bless you they are persecuted for blessing you they heal the sick and pay the price they open a branch and pay the price it takes grace to be loved, not good intention. My parents were right when they named me the way to love. They saw very far. So when people love you, I have been moved the last few weeks. Look at the concert we held. It mean that rain, and I saw many of you jumping up and down and rejoicing. No, it's a grace. It's a grace. The race is not to the swift. There are very anointed men of God that someone would prefer to listen to the tape than to come and sit down physically. So why do I have to travel that far and leave all the men of God in my city to come and sit down? You know, someone was talking to me and said, Apostle, I think you spend too much time seeing people after service. You go home past 12. It's not fair. And I said, oh dear. I know how constraining it is for me. Sometimes I'm coming from another meeting. But this is the least I can do to these dear people. Some of them come from as early as 12. And they sit, they pray for me. They sow into my life. How busy can I get? What else will I be doing? It's true. I will cancel any meeting a thousand times to make sure you are trained, you are built, you are mentored. 
I rather fail, sincerely speaking, God. You are spiritual people. I'm not a politician. I rather fail so that you will succeed. Because if you succeed by me failing, then I succeeded. It's true. There is nobody, let me tell you, that I don't believe in. Pray in one minute and say, Lord, help my heart to receive. Help my heart to be open. You are being trained and mentored to become something. You may not look like it now, but brothers and sisters, you just follow with humility. It may take time. You may compare your life with others and it may look as if you are slow. You just follow and let time tell where God is taking you to. Please pray. Lord, the grace to listen. Yes, I know I'm a man of God. I know I have revelation. I know I have anointing. But Lord, the grace to listen. The grace to see beyond a man. Lord, I receive grace to be committed. I reject every suggestion by Satan to alienate me from what you are doing in this season. Lord, I know that you are calling me to an extraordinary ministry. There is a reason why you have planted me here. There is a reason why you are equipping me. I may not have all the money that I need now. Others may seem to have gone ahead of me, but like Jesus walking on water, I know you are taking me some. He lead me and guide me to the city of love. He lead me and guides me to my place of destiny. He leads me and guides me to the city of love. Just one prayer. Lord, may I never go ahead of you in the blueprint of destiny. May I never let men push me out of my season in the name of rushing to look for results. You're a man of God here. Pray that prayer twice. Lord, may I, may I resist the pressure of premature manifestation. May I resist the pressure of pride and arrogance. Your life may look slower than the normal pace. But when God is done with you, you will find out that what you would have been doing has already been done in your obedience. Lift your voice and pray. It's a costly thing to go ahead of God. It's a costly thing to preach ahead of God. Is a costly thing to move ahead of God. The Bible says with God, not before God. With God, when you walk with Him. There's an old hymn that says when we walk with the Lord in the light of His word, not when we go ahead of Him. Men will force you to move ahead of seasons in your life. They will make you do things God is not saying. They will pressure you to open doors God is not opening. And destroy you and laugh at you when you fall but happy is the man that can sustain the stamina to walk at God's pace please pray Lord the grace Thank <laughs> you. 
Hala baka sode bela hatsana malakatush. Hallelujah. I remember years ago, a particular friend, a pastor friend then, he met me then, Koinonia had not started. We just used to hold the weekly programs then on campus. And he met me one day and said, man of God, you need to go for TV ministry. The level of your anointing, even some bishops don't have. That's supposed to be a good advice. The same advice of Peter, Jesus, don't die. You are too innocent to go to the cross. And that advice looked like a nice advice. And they just felt you are on that. Please, write books. Do this. Do that. And every time I went to the Lord, the Lord made me know that, Son, it is within my power to make you anything. So if I don't, it's because there is a time appointed. People told me, why don't start a church? Do something. Do this. Do that. Start TV ministry. Buy a car. Buy this. Buy that. You see, let me tell you, the steps of a spiritual man is very strange. A spiritual man is not a natural man. Don't sit down. You, how you know you are spiritual is the pathway of your life is meticulously guarded by the will of God. Others can go the way they want, but God says, "Remember, anytime I look at you, there is a nation in you. So they can. You, it is your obedience that will correct their mistakes. They can go, but you can't just go like them." There are some of you, you started your spiritual work with the same level with many others that have churches and branches today. And sometimes they may look at you and say, man of God, you are the one who mentored us. And God says, sit down. I know what I'm doing with you. Because when I'm done with you, there are certain kinds of graces and mantles that must come. And God says, sit down. Are we together? Please, I want you to listen. Men will mock you. They will misunderstand you. There is nothing unusual. We just are not students of history. That's why this thing surprises us. Go and read the Bible. Any great vision is fought by hell. You see why your life is fought by hell? The devil will fight you tooth and nail. Because he would rather you die. In your death is the death of a generation. So he would rather you die. Instead of killing the generation one by one, he says, kill Moses. Instead of killing the entire earth, human race, kill Jesus. Let me tell you this. This is a sensitive season in the spirit. Satan is not looking for everybody. There are people he will pass looking for others. Your, your, your destiny if the devil ever stops to consider you, there's something he's seeing. It's not just, I will live long, I will live old. No, there are people here, listen to me. Satan stopped attacking your family and turned to you because he found out, out of everything he searched, he found out, if I can destroy her prayer life, if I can destroy the anointing that I'm seeing, this man of God is surely a prophet of God. He does not even know it. But if I can kill that grace, then there is no need fighting 120 people. There is no need of fighting a Decapolis if it can make one man mad. And so because of that, listen, the devil will fight you. You may want to get up and come for Koinonia and the devil will relax now. Can't you get the tape afterwards? It's an attack. It's an attack. People will mock you sometimes and say you have been going to church. What is it to show for your life? No job, no house. Everybody is moving forward and they are leaving you. And you feel stupid for staying with God. This my God? Ah. He is my God and his name is Yahweh. Your name is Yahweh.
cannot buy. God is giving you what will bring both the rich and the poor to you. God is giving you something that you will never be ashamed of. It's not something you will use for 10 years and need another thing. No. There are, see, listen. You can get a degree, you can get a master's, you can get a PhD. And life will evolve such that what you studied may no longer be useful. It is possible. You can start a business and your product, life evolves such that your product is no longer needed. Like a typewriter. Are we together? Every other thing in life needs constant evolution. But when you know him, when you find him, when he anoints you, my brother you stay through any time there is no mortal man who can edge you out of the systems of god they can believe you are gone god will show them you are still there listen years ago when god was training me i remember one of the things that god told me he said son take your eyes away from the vanities of men the flamboyancy of ministry you just stay with me let me teach you there are many things i would later learn in my life i didn't know that was what the holy spirit was teaching me the holy spirit is a priceless asset don't mind the ignorant people that make it look like it doesn't pay to follow him you will look stupid while you follow him but when he's done with you he will bring beauty and glory they will look at you and your life will be Beulah and Hephzibah. You can do ministry the way you want to do. You can believe you have all the revelation you need and all the anointing. You just start going. On the way, you will see what dimensions of the kingdom you have ignored. And the price you will have to pay. And the price you will make others pay. For not paying attention. It's not enough to be called. It's not enough to feel trained. It's not enough to feel ready. You must be approved of God. Our level of carnality in this generation is becoming very serious. We ignore the voice of God. We just want to do things and get up and do it. No respect for the timing of God. No respect for spiritual things. Listen. Listen. We live by common sense. We run by principles, but we fly by instructions. Are, are you getting what I'm saying? When you want to walk in life one step, you can use brain work. Brain work is how many people want to achieve their destiny. The time in your life is too short to use brain work to be great. Then you use principles to run. But if it is flight, you will have to work on instructions. Those who teach pilots are not called teachers. They are not called lecturers. They are not called advisors. They are called instructors. Please sit down. Let's go to the word. I just, I just thought to, to just allow the Holy Spirit to talk to us. You know, when, when people see the anointing of the Spirit upon my life, many people believe it's just luck. I was just fortunate to be anointed. Or I was just called and ordained to be anointed. Or I was just fortunate to meet anointed people. And God anointed me. You really believe that? There are people who know nothing about the anointing. But then they will tell you, don't mind all these people. And yet you don't, we see, wisdom is justified by her children. Brothers and sisters, it is God that is the confirmer of everything. If God is not confirming something in your life, then listen to the person he's confirming something in his life. Are we together? One of the most dangerous things that can happen to a man is pride. You, you keep hearing me say this thing all the time. Pride is not just wrong. It truly is evil. 
you will watch yourself entering a pit and going down per second per second yet pride will make you believe you are in control you are in charge i am very open to want to know the areas in my life where i am ignorant because if i don't pay attention to them that would be the advantage of satan in my life so i like to know what don't i know thank god for the one i know but what don't i know i'm i'm like a spiritual archaeologist i don't want god to be this way and i'm there jumping what else am i doing because i've learned through experience that the secret to a man's relevance not his making heaven his relevance is to be where god is you can make heaven whether you are where god is or not i just want to be where you are you know that song dwelling in your presence i don't want to worship from afar I want to be where you are, dwelling in your presence, feasting at your table, surrounded by your glory, in your presence, that's where I always want. someone here God is saying be careful I want to announce you greater than you want to announce yourself but just be patient others may announce themselves and say look I am sent of God my father is a priest we are the sons of Skiva and the demons say no we don't know you but God can look at you and say I'm announcing this my daughter I'm announcing this my son it may cost you some momentary inconvenience don't mind it which woman loses her baby just because of birth pains in spite of the fact that the baby she's carrying a child and is inconveniencing she may be tired and almost want to give up but she knows that very soon and when that woman's delivery time is come she may go through all kinds of constraints but when that child comes people who were not supposed to come and visit will find their way and they will not just come alone they will come with gifts don't invite people into your life when the child is not born nobody comes to greet you when you are pregnant if you can stay through when the child comes then you deserve every gift the wise men were around but they never came to mary it was after jesus was born the magi they came the Bible says they brought, they came and bowed down before a baby. Not before Mary or Joseph. They bowed down before a baby and brought gifts of, of gold, of frankincense and myrrh. When you stay with God and birth what he's put in. And you see, God doesn't do nine months pregnancy. The pregnancy depends on many things. You can carry a child for five years. The first child can be delivered in four months and then the second child in seven years. This is God for you. Are we together? The first child can just be something that is very simple in the spirit. But the second child can be the core of your anointing. You will stay there. Someone can have seven births of spiritual reality. And you stay with one forever. As if it's cursed. But when that child comes, you will find out that all those seven will need that one child to be able to live. That's why you had to stay that long. When they looked at the womb of her with child, they said there are two nations, not two babies. Two nations. Hallelujah. So pay attention. You are not just here to receive tea and bread. You don't need to put yourself under this kind of constraint if all you need in life is tea and bread. What God is giving you in this place is more than tea and bread. It's more than just a successful life. As important as it is. It's more than just prosperity. In as much as we know prosperity. It's more than just influence. 
God is giving you something that cannot be bought in any market on earth. He's putting something in your life that makes it impossible. For some of you, what you are receiving is the remedy for these complexes and all this inferiority that our families have put in us. For when you have something that only God can provide, then men must look for you. That's what he's giving. You are planning to save to buy a house. He's giving you what will make house owners come to you and say, can I have the privilege of having you in my estate? God is showing you a more excellent approach to life. It looks strange because it's not a mainstream approach to life. But you walk with God and see. A time will come you will turn back and not have needs again. And you say, Lord, what did he do? I say, it's a more excellent way. You follow the way men, men follow to be established, to live their lives. You are going to leave God somewhere in your equation. Especially in our generation. You must leave God somewhere. But when he guides you, when he leads you. Ah. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Pray in the spirit for one minute. And say, Lord, open my eyes through your word tonight. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Tonight I'm preaching a message I titled Spiritual Stability. Please listen to this message. It's a powerful message and it will bless you. Spiritual Stability three scriptures first corinthians 15 and verse 58 spiritual stability i didn't have any divine revelation for this message but the message has come as a response to a need that i've seen in the body of christ that we need to explore the keys that are responsible for being grounded and being established in spiritual things are we together the teaching is an attempt to address the vacillations that we continually experience in our work with God based on a number of factors that we are going to be discussing that a believer can not only grow but can become stable are we together Yes. So it's, it's, it's an attempt to explore the keys to a grounded and productive Christian life. It matters to you and matters to God that your Christian life be grounded and productive. The Bible declares once and again that herein is our Father glorified. It says when we bear much fruit it says that we produce fruit and that our fruits abide are we together three scriptures very quickly follow me tonight i hope we are able to finish it tonight therefore my beloved brethren be ye steadfast unmovable then it says always abounding in the work of the lord for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the lord Paul is speaking here to the church in Corinth and he's telling believers that they be steadfast and then unmovable, unshakable, unbendable. So it is possible that a man can be stable in his Christian experience. Ephesians chapter 4 please and verse 14. The Bible speaking about the fivefold ministry. It says that we henceforth, the matured ones, the ones who have been built now by the gifts that, the, that, that, that God has supplied the body, that we henceforth be no more what? Please talk to me. Children, tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive 
so there is a level of spiritual stability that a believer can get he can attain onto a realm and a level in his work with God where you are unbendable where you you are so fortified that deception becomes an impossible experience for you it is possible one more scripture and then we'll begin to teach Colossians chapter 2 please we'll read from verse 6 to 8 Colossians chapter 2 it says as ye therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord so walk ye in him we're reading to verse 8 7 it says rooted read with me rooted and built up in him stop there notice it didn't just say built up rooted and then built up in him and established in the faith as ye have been taught abounding therein with thanksgiving verse 8 beware so you are not just being aware just by an information something you are doing in verse 7 is what will sustain this lest any man spoil you these are the various ways that men can be made to vacillate spiritually ready through number one is what please talk to me philosophy and then vain deceit and then the traditions of men and then the redoments another word there is the patterns the modus operandi the system of operation of this world and not after christ it is possible that a man can live his life manifesting the knowledge that just comes through philosophy and then vain deceit and then the tradition of men and then the redoments of this world you can believe this today and then tradition tells you no things are done this way and then you readjust your life to suit tradition are we together and while you are trying to gain stability through tradition all of a sudden the redoments of this world these are the things that destroy us they say this is how they do it in life you don't even know who puts that room no this is how they do it this is how they do this this is how parenting happens this is how marriage happens this is how prosperity happens this is how ministry is done the bible says beware prophesy to yourself say beware he said lest any man so who are the men who are the people the vessels that the devil uses they are not just angels they are men let any man spoil you the word spoil you there doesn't mean corrupt the word spoil you means to plunder to steal from you like an asset something of treasure has been given to you and then a man comes to spoil you like you come and rob a man and carry everything that is treasurable he said beware that means you are possessing something that has potential something of worth but beware lest men come sometimes innocently but they are in the similitude of robbers they can spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit and the tradition of men and the redoments this is the one that even disturbs me the most the redoments of this world this is how it is done it's amazing how many people's destinies have been wrong perpetually they one of the ways that people have become failures in life is by aligning to a tradition and a pattern that has been obeyed for a long time but is wrong just because someone did something and kept doing it kept doing it for decades they can tell you this is it in this family nobody really you all this your jesus thing we love jesus and you the person who is talking is not very serious with god and he's marketing his template of spirituality to you and every time you show any unusual passion they say see we did this thing and left it the regiments of this world and people even turn scriptures in the bible and say see the bible even said don't be over what, what, over righteous over spiritual and the person who is sharing that thing doesn't love the word of god he just found a scripture that will give him a basis for laxity and unseriousness a man can be stable spiritually as a man of God it's important to realize that you are mentoring and building people 
based on a truth you are convicted about. Let me tell you this. Not everybody can receive the correction that you propose after receiving your error. Not everybody will be alive and within your reach. Are we together? If I teach you, come. If I teach you something erroneous now, and 10 years down the line, this brother goes abroad and he's in the US. He has institutionalized that error and he's paying the price. Life is whipping him for it. And I later go and find the truth. And I say, people, sorry, what I said 10 years ago is a mistake. This guy may never live to hear it. He will still be carrying the mindset of me of 10 years ago. And even when God is telling him adjust, he said, no way. Apostle said this. That's why it is important that men of God, we become the first guinea pigs to our revelations. Before proposing, it's not just anything you hear on tape and anything you feel is nice or anything by a man of God you love and respect. You just ship and just spill everything to your people. When people are loyal to you, that means they have come to a point where either through a track record or a divine revelation, they have come to accept your word as the word of God over their lives. So they have opened up their spirits that any communication that comes from this man of God should be received subconsciously. They have come to a point where they, they, have, they have found comfort in following you as you follow after Christ. And you have a responsibility to probe and vet every revelation that is communicated to make sure it is worthy of giving to a generation, not just members. Beware. Thank you. Lest any man spoil you. Are we together? Through philosophy, vain deceit, traditions of men, and the rudiments of this world, and not after Christ. It's amazing how you see people believe this today and they don't believe this tomorrow today i believe deliverance tomorrow i don't believe deliverance today i believe prosperity then i read one book by somebody i respect and all of a sudden i hate money next tomorrow i believe the gifts of the spirit the day after i believe common sense next tomorrow i believe divine direction the next ah, ah. no those those vacillations are very very dangerous you must be established to know that you can look at your children and say, children, before you were born, this was what I stood for. And even now as I am old, I'm standing for this. I called God a faithful God when I was 18. I am 85. He's still a faithful God. I have not created another wrong name based on an experience. That's the goal of this teaching. And I'm going to share with you three keys that the Lord or four that God has put in my heart keys that will create stability in your Christian life because you see the internet social media um, Christian channels and all kinds of spiritual platforms right now on one hand they have benefited the body of Christ but on another hand they have created gross confusion there are many people you have heard people you love and respect say things that have almost rattled the foundation of your convictions it's easy to resent somebody you don't believe but what happens when you hear someone who you love so much is saying and doing and standing for things that now makes you confused and so i must share with you otherwise we are going to be in serious trouble especially as a man of god here there is no guarantee that the person you look up to will continue to stand straight so in as much as you look up to people it's important to create a system are we together otherwise we are going to be in trouble you follow men as they follow christ not just as they go before you you follow men as they follow christ Meaning that the day you don't see Christ before them, you are permitted to live it. This is, this is, this in itself, this thing I just said in itself can bring me a lot of trouble. Because sometimes we men of God teach people that trying to probe whether you are still following Christ as they follow you can draw a curse to their life. And even when people have long left the things of God, they still demand loyalty from people. No, you follow a man of God as he follows Christ. If you're with me, say amen. amen. The first key that you need to have stability in your Christian experience 
and please i don't want you to forget this the first key is an experiential revelation of god write it down an experiential revelation of god i can spend the whole night talking here if 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 we're unable to to exhaust this within the time we have then we can just have part two of it an experiential revelation of god look up please there is the experience of the kingdom john chapter 3 when you read um from verse from verse 1 down to 3 let's let's go to verse 3 but nicodemus comes to jesus by night and says to him rabbi we know that thou art a man sent from God he says he says for no man can do these things except God be with him and then verse 3 John ah okay keep verse 3 Jesus answered and said unto him verily verily I say unto thee except a man be born again he cannot see the kingdom take note of the word see verse 4 Nicodemus now says, can a man be born when he's old, you know, can he enter into his mother's womb the second time? And then verse 5, Jesus clarifies and says, verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born of water and of the spirit, then he changes his terminology. He cannot enter the kingdom of God. He's talking about two related but different experiences there to see the kingdom and to enter the kingdom there is an experience of god listen very carefully there is an experience there is the knowledge of god a theoretical knowledge which is not wrong in itself are we together but there is the experience the experience of god the bible says oh taste and see not just hear and believe there is a place you hear but there is a place you can taste you can see your sensory perceptions can participate in your knowing god brothers and sisters the times that we are living in will require you knowing a god that you have an experience over it's good to know joshua selman's god it's good to know this and that man of God's God. But you must come to a point where you glean from their own experience and then create a road map through it until he becomes your God. Are we together? The experiential revelation of God. The Bible says, and the people that do know their God, not the people that do hear that there is a God. The heathens heard already about the God of the Hebrews. But they did not know him let, let me tell you this your life will be at the mercy of your experiential revelation of who god is to you and there are three ways that god is revealed experientially in fact i think there's a message that i preached some years knowing god experientially you can get that message it will bless you in no small way but three major ways ready number one the first way to have an experiential revelation of God is through his word, the written word. 1 Samuel 3.21 1 Samuel 3.21 God can give men encounters through his word. I told you that the word of God, the logos are we together? Just keep the scripture there. But make reference quickly on your notes to John 1 verse 1. The Bible says, in the beginning was the word. The Greek word there is logos. The logos of God, the thoughts of God. A compendium of his character, his methodology. Encapsulated in a material. So that as you study that material, you not only cram scripture, but it expands your spiritual horizon to understand how God behaves. The logos. A man can experience God through his word. The Bible says, And the Lord appeared again in Shiloh. For the Lord revealed himself to Samuel in Shiloh. How? By the word of the Lord. So God can use his word to reveal himself. You can know his character based on his word. I know Sam. Come Sam. I know Sam, I've worked with Sam for many years. He's an amazing gentleman and I love him very much. Because I have interacted with him very much. Are we together? There is something that someone can come and meet me now and say, Apostle, 
Sam said, I should tell you A, B, C. I will make reference to the track record of my walking with him. Are we together? And know whether Sam can say this or not. I would rather be wrong and say sorry to that person. But as far as that information is concerned, I can throw it away. Are you getting what I'm saying? So, the word of God is a revelation. Um, one of our dear media ladies, I, I, I was, during my birthday, she has a blog page, a wonderful blog page, by the way. You can, you honestly would want to just go to her blog page. Very rich, wonderful materials. And that lady, I can't even remember the name of the blog page. It was, it was shown me and I went through it. And she wrote certain quotes or certain things that, that I say that has inspired. I didn't even know that I've stressed those points that much to become a quote. Are we together? Now, if one young man gets up and says, I know apostle. Apostle is my spiritual father. Apostle is my this, my apostle is my mother, is my uncle, is my sister, and says all those kinds of things. And they say two quotes from him. And he just says one kind of thing. He said, No, it's my Muro that said this one now. It's not. <laughs> Are you seeing that now? Automatically, you know that this guy is a liar. If someone says, I attend Koinonia every time, there are a few tests. Very few litmus tests. I mean, you don't need to, you can't fake it. Just, there are very few things. Anybody at all, even if you are not a faithful member, there are just certain things. You can know that, no, it's a lie. Someone attends Koinonia, hear someone shout and say, what's happening? He say, ah, I thought you said you attend this. You are not, something is betraying you somewhere. So the logos of God. Thank you, Sam. The word of God was not just given for us to cry. It's a compendium of his way of behavior through different dispensations. So that as we study, we have the mind of Christ. Are we together? We have an understanding of the way he behaves. So the Lord appeared to Samuel in Shiloh by the word. Number two, the way, remember we're still on point one now. I hope, I hope I'm not confusing you. You can call it point A, through his word. B, the second way experiential revelation of God is given to the saints. Now pay attention. Is through the family of believers. Your interaction with the family of believers. What the Bible calls the household of faith. Many people do not know that your interaction with a kingdom community of believers can help you experience God. Hmm. The family of true believers, the household of faith, is one of the platforms that God designed for men to encounter Him experientially. A number of scriptures, Acts chapter 2, please. We'll read 42 to 47. Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. 42 to 47. And they continued steadfastly. Listen carefully. Who are the they? The community of believers. Is that true? The Bible says steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. And what? Talk to me. And fellowship. And in breaking of bread and in prayers. We are reading to 47, 43. And fear came upon every soul. And many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. 44. And all that believed were what? All that believed were not apart there was a community system so this issue of kingdom community I have I have proposed again and again that the keys to maintaining kingdom values one of the keys is to create a community of believers no believer can truly become matured in the spirit in isolation you must be grafted to a family of faith that is territorial are we together and all that believed were together and had all things in common. 45. They sold their possession and their goods and parted them all uh, to all men, uh, you know, as everyone had a need. 46. And they, listen, continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking of bread from what? House to house did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart. What was the result? 47. Praising God, the Bible says, and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily 
as should be saved. That means God was supporting that community life. Saying you are getting it right. Everywhere there is a community of believers that is a platform that was created by God to see that believers rise, continue to grow. The benefit they get is God's support by adding daily, not weekly, not monthly, not per fellowship, daily. They were praising God, having favor with all the people. The Lord added to the church. He calls them the church. Daily, such as should be saved. The family of faith. Galatians 6 verse 10. Where we get the word household of faith. Very powerful scripture. Then give us Hebrews chapter 10 verse 25. I'm giving you scriptures like this because I want to support what I'm teaching intelligently. There are all kinds of people. We minister to people from different nations now. If Let me teach you this. This is a place for mentorship, so we believe in excellence, but I want you to learn the motivation behind the things that I do. You see, when you begin to mentor people who come from different geographic and cultural context, I can talk to all of you without bringing one scripture because there is a track record of your understanding my pattern of teaching are we together you know that every time i speak i will support it but maybe in france or the u.s or somewhere someone right now who may be hedonistic is listening and just has a bible or an unbeliever a muslim who just gave his life to christ so you will need to support these points they may look basic to you oh one point is enough apostle i'm convinced but i'm not just talking to you alone when you begin to minister at a global level, you must have the patience and the simplicity to carry the larger crowd of people along. Otherwise, a time will come, your doctrine will only be understood by those who are close to you. And that is because of the track record you have created. Are you getting this now? So, Galatians 6 verse 10. It says, as we therefore, as we have therefore opportunity, let us do good to how many men? all men but it says let your focus be on a community of believers this those who are of the household of faith you encounter god through a spiritual community life let me tell you this you have a spiritual family just like a physical family and the spiritual family of course ultimately is our family connected to God but on earth and territorially you will never prosper spiritually if you are not connected to a larger body of a spiritual family God designed it that way are we together there are all kinds of spiritual possibilities that are vested broadly speaking in the body of Christ but uniquely speaking to the spiritual family that God connects to you friends revelation access to anointing access to help there are many believers when they are in trouble for instance and they need to see the mercy of god there is no man and there is no community to come and reveal the mercy of god to them someone dies you are alone nobody to come and greet you you give birth to a child nobody you are not part of any larger body of believers that can be sympathetic to what you are doing when you need to see the hand of God, you are not connected to anyone. Most times when people come and talk to me and say, Apostle, this is uh, somebody, a member of Koinonia and all of that. Most times I ask, what department? He says, uh, I'm not in any department, but I can assure you I'm faithful. He says, uh, you are marking yourself already. How do you know you are faithful? Community life is very powerful when it has to do with experiencing God. A, a spiritual family shields you there are some of us here right now physically you almost don't have a family either everybody has died or everybody is completely wayward and not of god or everybody hates you and already you are just like a prodigal son but for a good reason until you find god don't come back home are we together some of us are unbelievers we are the first christians in our family so you really don't have you can't stand there in isolation look at this how many of you have seen charcoal burning coal burning red hot coal remove one red hot one and just keep it don't off the uh, what they call it now just leave it there don't pour water on it after a while what happens it starts going down so the strength of that fire was the community life notice 
that every time satan wants to destroy a life one of the ways is he will make everybody in your community your enemy he will make you to have problem with everyone your head of department apostle anybody when all your helpers have been driven through your hatred when you are alone it's not only god that comes to jacob when he's alone satan too comes when you are alone he can come to you and say now that the person who can pray for you is gone now that the sister that can support you you have you have hated her and you have insulted her i can now strike you and your pride will not allow you run to them so you will stay there till they find your dead body spiritually community life is powerful are we together now when the believers were afraid and they were persecuted imagine if all of them hid one by one they went somewhere and stayed alone even in times of crisis as in physically speaking the security when people are clustered within an area it becomes even if they are afraid it becomes difficult for the enemy to just break every siege there some of us stand alone and do everything alone and we flatter ourselves into believing that we are strong my bible says two are better than one is that true the bible says then when they become three they become a, a cord that cannot be easily broken community life is a powerful system to have an experience of god when you come into the sanctuary there are dimensions of god that you ordinarily would not have gotten in your personal place of prayer but God reveals himself as the word of God is coming now as you look at your brother someone taking the testimony promise is coming to take the testimony you are learning something about God somebody is doing this you are learning something they raise a song of worship you see a Jimmy worshiping wow so great men can worship God this vocally you are what the the worship team revealing the excellence of God there are things you will never learn just sitting down in your room are we together Listen, let me tell you this. Let us encourage, and, and, and I'm saying this from a personal point, encourage your children to have a desire for the house of God, not just the things of God. There are families here that come as a family for koinonia. I truly am honored when I see that because it's, it's not just a sacrifice. They are salvaging a generation especially some of these are young children some of them hate god the devil is planting a seed of hatred in them have you seen them they come to the house of god they never enter and sit down they stroll around they they hang around they move around they are making calls they are doing this if they say something that is funny they laugh outside and then they turn they continue you give them offering they go and buy uh, uh what do we call it puff puff around and they are eating let's not let's not it's not a laughing matter it's a sign that we are losing something are we together the house of god so you go home now and you say let's pray see the child frowning his face he's coming to sit down it's time for prayer i say please this prayer that they are lying in this house it's better to be lying with prayer it's better community life community life Hebrews 10 25 Hebrews 10 25 not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is he said but exhorting one another and so much the more as he see the day approaching are we together that we should not forget and forsake the assembly of ourselves you've heard me listen to my message um preservers of divine ordinances part one and two i teach there that any spiritual environment is bankrupt if there is no platform that can create a convergence of believers for the purpose of training equipping and mentorship you can look at a territory and know that there are no apostolic and prophetic voices because there is no platform honored by god you see his signature there 
as a prophetic platform that has nothing to do with denominational barriers you know that this one is god making his presence known mentoring a territory to know him it's not just tied to i am this i'm that i'm apostle this i'm prophet this i'm apostle joshua Selma. no there has to be a, a platform where believers are mentored where they grow are we together let's read one more scripture hebrews chapter 3 verse 12 and 13 and then we'll move to something that i think um we can just stop at point one i don't know i don't know let's see how god will help us so you have an experiential revelation of god that's the first key and that by his word number one number two by the presence your participation in the household of faith hebrews chapter 3 from verse 12 take heed brethren look up please lest there be any of you let there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living god next verse 13 but exhort one another how long exhort one another not exhort god exhort one another that means i have a role to play in your spiritual growth you have a role to play in my life you will think that because i am the one who is majorly building you you don't have any role he said exhort one another daily while it is called today lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin that means something happens come pastor femi that pastor femi can be a powerful believer but in isolation to the supply of the body are we together now there is no system of exhortation he may not even know when he has veered off sincerely and not know but that the presence of the corporate body is a spiritual system for check and balance are you getting what i'm saying now you may not know you may be busy pastor femi and maybe have two months of ministration all around and not have the time to pray for instance and you may be justifying yourself but when you come now and see that i'm busier than you and yet i'm still praying by that act i have exhorted you i have killed the excuse the devil wants to take to say i am busy you go back and say no if i'm just doing one ministration per week and it's affecting my prayer life someone that is doing three are you seeing that now yeah the moment you want to become proud and arrogant i just got one million and then you come and turn and you see a jimmy lying down ah and you say how much is his shirt how much is his shoe you just say i, I better drop my my small one million that is entering my head and lie down and roll before god you are exhorting you don't just exhort by talking your life shows it too when you see people that love god more than you rolling on the ground sometimes you don't plan to roll but when you look around ah benga is kneeling ah daddy prof is kneeling hey, Jimmy is rolling promise is rolling you turn back sam is kneeling you will feel stupid as what i say do you better join and kneel down those outside are falling more than those inside are we together yes it is the absence of this corporate life that makes local champions leave god there is no system have when when you start making money and you go where wealthy people are worshiping god they throw their phone away and roll on the floor you just stand and say this is my boss this is the person that gave me the job that i've been testifying i heard she was a millionaire before i was born so this is how this woman rose before God. You call your wife and say, wife, we will roll on that carpet. Roll on the ground. Sometimes you need someone higher than you to show you how to serve God. Because you see, every time you have results, sometimes they confuse you. How do I serve God at this new level? And God says, come to the house of God. Ah, I started prophesying and right now one month everybody is placing a demand on my grace and then god says oh yeah come and meet a prophet who started prophesying before you were born again and see how he serves god and all of a sudden you are dancing i got an award and this award is this and that and god says come let me show you the person who owns the company that gives the award and how he's serving god corporate life 
does so much many things happen in this service beyond the pulpit you can have a heart of wickedness to annoy a brother or sister and all of a sudden they use their kindness and torture you all through the service you say nasty things they say no problem it's well this is my seat is no, no, okay sit down and while they sit down favor just come somebody says sit, sit here every bad thing you are doing god is speaking to you in that service with results your message in that service becomes look it is it is good to be good this bad attitude work on it you will be surprised i may be teaching on the anointing but that's the message you came to the house of god there are many believers that are not like Christians because they are alienated from the house of God. They cannot, do you know that the house of God even helps you to speak well? I mean educationally, I'm not talking of spiritually. Many dull people around who have alienated. When you listen to a man, you listen to a people that have some measure of excellence, do you know that it will affect you? Many people, look at our look at the children in koinonia you see how intelligent they are because they are gleaning from adults they go back and meet their their colleagues who don't they are not smart they they, they just fail everything like that and say ah, what is wrong that's why the children of pastors are very intelligent because from birth everybody holding them is praying or speaking or blessing they don't have the opportunity for wickedness to touch them that's why satan keeps timing them you are in the house of God. Turn to your neighbor and say this and that. Turn to your neighbor and do this. You can even help socialize. You came from a bad background where you even hate yourself. You came to the house of God. And you are somebody who is shy. You can't turn and tell somebody God bless you. And before you know it, someone carries his hand, gives you a big hug. And you are like, ah, so this is how this thing is. By next Sunday, you are ready. Come on now, talk to me, Koinonia. Watch this. The first person who ever hugged you was somebody in the house of God. And you felt so bad, you thought there were strings attached until they told you that's how they are here. And you say, really? And somebody looks at you and says, the Lord told me. You never knew that God can speak to men to bless you. But someone just turns and says, Pastor Femi, um, I don't know, are you a first timer? Yes. The Lord asked me to give you 10,000. Whereas you came, God told you to leave your house and come by faith that someone will pay your transport. If you didn't come to the house of God, you will never experience God that way. Are you getting what I'm saying? When you neglect the gathering of the saints, it is not the same thing as listening to a tape. There are things your eyes need to see. There are things your ears need to hear. I believe it's even one of the reasons, hey Jimmy, why our generation keeps marrying bad wives and husbands. Where are you going to get a good wife? Let's be very sincere. Your chances of getting a very good God, remember, you need to marry somebody who believes what you, are, what you believe. You pray in tongues and somebody say, I'm calling police. Is, is that marriage? How? Or the man wants to sow and say, for what? How much are we earning that we're going to sow? Because you don't understand these principles. Take seriously what I'm saying. Many believers, I, I don't know, sometimes I don't know what is wrong with us. We come and we sit down and then we go outside, go and ship all versions of unbelievers, bring into our lives and the devil said, thank you. That one thing I've been looking for to cheat you in life, you finally gave me. Ah, the brothers in church are not nice. The sisters in church, let me tell you, it's better to die in church. Oh. Let me just give you a very honest statement. Because God is always found in the midst of the lampstands. If a brother slaps you in church, there's somebody he submits to, you can report. If your if you're wicked bubble somewhere slaps you, who will you report to? His father. Listen. Hallelujah. Sit down. As, as you are hearing me, you see God is saying many things this night. But there are many stubborn believers that as God is talking now, you have programmed your spirit to be as hardened as whatever. May you be delivered this night in the name of Jesus. 
you know any, any unbeliever somewhere, just go and fool you and laugh around and say, oh, don't mind all these God people. You are going to your church again. Haba, you can't make this sacrifice for me. That's already a Luciferian spirit. It's a revelation to run away fast. He has not married you. He is, he's, he's stopping. He's resenting a man of God. The man of God that is training and building you. He said, no, don't mind all these people. And you are truly, you are not minding them. Say the house of God. People have gotten jobs because of their connection. Is that true? With Christian families. Please learn this thing. Many of our loved ones are suffering in pride because there is a dimension of the love and the mercy of God in the house of God that they have ignored. By God's grace, in this ministry, as you know, we have a system that provides help for people. It may be in limited ways, but at least we make sure we do. There are people just being members of Koinonia, their school fees were settled till they graduated. They didn't come from families that could allow that. And they saw the love of God. And it's not necessarily that it was me that paid it. Some of them just came together. Ah, this is your final year. You got born again in January. Oh, it's better than nothing. You are welcome. So what's the issue now? My school fees. How much do you have? 1,000. How much is left? 40,000. No. Believers, let's come together. Let me tell you. Don't let anybody make you hate the church. Hear what I'm saying. Don't let... I know that we have issues. I'm not saying we don't have issues. Are we together? But don't make anybody... When we started this ministry, our fun, our jokes, our time out, everything was among believers. It's why you see the marriages in this ministry very solid and powerful. Are we together? Very solid and powerful. Is God speaking to you? Stability through fellowship. That God is revealing, he's, he's experientially revealing himself. Please, sisters, let me say it again. Don't marry anybody. Don't even say yes. Don't say let's try two months or two months. No, don't even do one day. Don't marry anybody that is not connected to any spiritual family. Even if he tells you he's born again. I repeat, don't marry any man. Insult me, but just listen any man this i love you i love you thing this we're in the end times the devil is 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 destroying people's destinies you will be unfair not just to yourself but to the children that are coming out of you that's how you have all these people go around deceiving these girls that they are christians before you know it the moment they get married they say i hope you know you understand that me when it's cold i take a, 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 a this thing and the lady saying, I never saw, I said, is this just because I gave a little break? The, the house of God has a system that ensures you get it right. Well, it's my job to teach and say what I'm saying. It's your own job to listen and hear what I'm saying as a word from the Lord or stubbornly decide to do whatever you want. I will always pray for you even if you crash land. I have loved you with an everlasting love. But my advice is that it is better to be happy by listening. Are we together? Thank you, Pastor Femi. Number, number three, still on point one. Remember, I'm teaching on the keys that create stability in your work with God. And the first point we said was an experiential revelation of God. And we broke it down into a few points. Number one is that the word of God can help you experience God. Number two, the family of believers. Are you ready for number three? Number three. Now hold on please. Pay attention here. If this is where we stop tonight, then media this becomes part one. Are we together? This becomes spiritual stability part one. I doubt if we'll be able to finish because there are four points. But the third way of knowing God experientially is through your pain and challenges. Write it down. I want to seriously teach here. Psalms 107. We are going to read verse 6, verse 13, verse 19 and 28. 6, 13, 19, 28. Actually, the whole verse there. I want to make you love your past tonight. Not necessarily 
past and all you know many times we men of god teach hate the past leave it yes but i want to show you there is something from your yesterday that can reveal the god of your tomorrow they cried unto the lord when not in their comfort they cried unto the lord in their trouble and what did he do he came in as a deliverer next verse verse um what now 13 please give us verse 13 still 107 psalms 13 they cried unto the lord again in their trouble what did he do he didn't deliver them he saved them are you seeing different dimensions they cry unto the lord their trouble makes them to cry unto the lord let me tell you this brothers and sisters i hate to be a bearer of bad news but there is something about your pain and the knowledge of god there is a relationship between your tears there is a relationship between your challenges and your disappointments and the unique revelation of god to you hmm. pain and challenges force force us to need and prioritize god write it down your pain and your challenges they have a way of forcing you to need and prioritize god there are many of us it's not that you have left god but sincerely he's not a priority and so certain times when when certain things shake you and hit you all of a sudden you will remember that there i, I need to run back to god I need to make things right with them. I don't believe that God goes around causing people pain and sorrow. No, the Bible says every good and perfect gift. But because of our human nature, God utilizes every unfavorable moment. Let me tell you, a spiritual man is one who can turn both glory and pain into something that helps him to know God. We have this, we have this, um, we have this level. There, there's something about believers. We frown at pain when believers go through challenges. And sometimes the church, again, we are the ones who bring these kinds of things. Come, Sam. All of a sudden, something happens to Sam. Maybe he loses a loved one. Are we together? And God forbid, Sam, just an example. And or something happens to him. There's disappointment somewhere. And you hear believers come. Ah, ah Sam, didn't you hear God? What this didn't this happen? Didn't this happen? Whereas God is, is taking advantage of that opportunity to say, Sam, I'm bringing you to a point where there is something about me you otherwise would not know. If he did not go to the cave of Adullam, David would never know certain things about God. Please listen to what I'm saying. If you started that ministry from day one and 1,000 people came, you will never believe God is a God of process. And so, with all your anointing for the first one year, only two members. The day you did your thanksgiving, four came, two left before the service was over. And you just called your wife. Your wife said, my husband, I've never doubted you, but Kai, today, let me tell you the truth. I know that when you told me God called you, it's not, I'm using, I'm using husband, I'm using a... Come, wife. Now, watch this. I've never doubted you. You said God, God called you. I said, yes, he called you. Are you not seeing what I've, is it not, is it not my, my anointing that, that made your, your father sick that he allowed me to marry you? Why, when I, what are you, are doubting me today? And then all of a sudden, the man is now touched and said, Lord, if my own wife, that is the surest member of my church, is about to leave, you better speak to me oh did you call me watch this that seven days dry will lead you to call on to god and god just comes and says son write this i it is true i have anointed you to speak my purposes to the nation a b c d where you will now be dancing celebrating 10 years anniversary when it's your time to give the testimony you are now going to say look i know that god is the lifter of men and you see the wife crying because she knows the other members are just laughing they came into the inheritance of the promise but the woman is standing there come darling 
are we together ah we want to thank god for our mother our this and she's just looking at them lord thank you if i left now this i would have buried my head in shame thank you jesus you have wasted your pain and your challenges and never knew god through them you conquer challenges not by having a way out but by seeing god in them in every challenge there is a dimension of god that is waiting to be revealed listen brothers and sisters in every challenge there is a dimension of god there are dimensions of god you may never know though he slay me yet will i trust him there are things you hear me say casually about god today brothers and sisters it's because of the abundance of what i've gone through there are things that you can hear us say at the beginning of this ministry remember i told you how things didn't work there were times that i prayed i fasted i sowed seeds i've said it you've heard me say it again all my scholarships were spent on the kingdom never spent anything on myself there are times that my heavens will close oh god is this tithing working or not so when you see somebody come and say apostle i've been tithing since january say just january and you are complaining <laughs> just january and it's not like the favor close it's just that it's not yet enough you better thank god and keep moving there's something you know let me tell you when you are too innocent in life you can't be sent um not i i, I no, the word is i hope i hope you understand what i mean by innocent when you are scarless you can't be sent there is a level of scar that must be on you as a testament you are never please help those under the anointing there you can never represent god scarless there is a mark that is a testament are we together now yes you've never been disappointed in your life you've never had to cry in your life you've never had to lock the door to pray and as a man of god just kneel down and say lord i don't hate you but right now i don't know what to say don't mind all these people that lie all around and make it look like they've been laughing forever it's a lie even jesus wept say it after me jesus one more time jesus the son of the living god the word that creates everything got to a point in his life where is a father imagine if that part of jesus was not captured for us we'll feel guilty whenever we cry in the midst of challenges but today someone can lose a loved one and while we come we'll not just say why didn't you have faith we will continue to teach on life but we can join together and cry and not feel bad apostle you are crying that somebody died well what happened to the anointing that you walk with no problem you may laugh at me but i i have i have learned something with god that he's not just a mighty god he can also be touched with the feelings of our infirmity so i will not just preach life and run away from you when you lose your loved ones and say no 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 we are, are life-giving spirits no we are life-giving spirits but there are women who died and didn't receive the promise and the bible joined all and called it faith so we will cry together are we together oh you come and all of a sudden you say look apostle this and that and that and that this and that i mean you know not to feel bad but i mean look at this is how my life is i made a stupid decision i i carried my salary and all of a sudden somebody scammed me and this happened i'm just you are stupid i've been drumming divine direction no compassion pain and challenges reveal a dimension of god to you and through you that no other thing no other dimension of kingdom living can reveal there are some of you here god will allow you purposely to stay without food so that the day you become a multi-millionaire you can look at a family and they can say apostle do you know we love god but as it is there's no food this night you will say well maybe i have prophesied to you what else are you waiting for no compassion is not natural with the natural man something must happen to a man to make him compassionate there's nothing like i'm naturally kind no it is life that can bring someone to his knees there are some of you here for instance you by your normal standard you probably would have been doing phd now 
or even be professors but some of you you are in 300 level right now it may look like it's a disadvantage but there is something through that pain that is revealing God tomorrow when you see somebody going through things and people say this yeah yeah guys say no I've been there you know why I don't talk against men of God they've persecuted me and they do it every time I know the pain of being persecuted I know the pain of being lied about I know the pain of being misunderstood so I will never sow that seed not to you not to anybody that's why I never insult the body of Christ when you hear people do that they are still innocent let them continue growing I know the pain of what it means to see a young man with influence like this and say maybe they are using charm or demonic power no I know the pain of people trivializing your sacrifice everybody say pain say challenges a lady that has entered five or six relationships and has been disappointed by all those brothers gave her heart gave her all and those brothers just made life miserable for her it may be bad but if you can see christ through your pain the sight of him will wipe your tears all of a sudden and you'll say thank you after all i've been through i still have joy i still have joy i still have joy after all I've been through, I still have joy. What have you gone through in life? Hold on. I want to ask you a question, everyone listening to me. What have you gone through in life that has made you matured? What have you gone through in life that has stopped you from insulting men? What have you gone through in life, man of God, that will make money not to move you? what have you gone through in life how many of you know that there is a way life whips you that even when you see the result you don't celebrate much again because you started celebrating without the result you are already used to it so if someone buys a car you just say lord thank you and then you go back and say lord who should i give it to god says, oh, you can enjoy this one and it doesn't move you because you have learned to rejoice in the midst of pain i show you a, a this is a very mature spiritual teaching I believe in prosperity i will continue to speak over your life to be blessed i remember one dear lady years ago one of our, our dear, well not really part but a dear lady it was a few weeks to her wedding when something happened cats had been out several things happened i mean everybody was rejoicing like every other lady she was happy ready to rejoice and then something just went terrible cut the long story short wedding was cancelled I remember when I got the text in my mind I said no my, all I was thinking about is this lady because the same friends that were dancing are the same ones that will run and say ah so you see that that's the thing you do you know this is a dimension of God through men that you need to learn that he's truly a friend that stick it closer than a brother someone who can stand and say I will be with you and all of a sudden the moment they say crucify him they will join the people and say crucify you Many of us don't have the wisdom of the spirit because our lives are too innocent. That's why you trust anybody anyhow. That's why you do anything anyhow. Please listen to what I'm teaching you tonight. Are we together? I remember calling the lady. When I called her, as soon as she picked my call, she started crying. Because people had called her were disappointed. Why didn't you find out A and B and C and D? All kinds of nonsense. See, men, ba, you need to love God to love men. Men can be so wicked, you will be justified to hate them. Are we together? I called that dear lady. I said, sweetheart, where are you? I said, I need to see you. Let's meet in the night. And in her mind, she thought, you know, most times when people hear my messages, they believe that I'm a disciplinarian with all versions of whips. I'm not a stupid person. Are we together? Yes. God gives anointing, but our brains are still there. We are human beings. When I teach, I teach in a preventive way. That's why sometimes you can see I can lash it. But when you are meeting people one-on-one, -on -one, you are dealing with real life issues. We are humans. It doesn't mean it's not an excuse for you not to listen. To just say, okay, so since there's another dimension. 
there is hellfire and there's mercy too all created by God are we together I remember calling that lady and when she came I was seeing her inside a car and the first thing I did was to just hug the lady and she began to cry and I didn't say a word I just allow sometimes don't stop people from crying too early these tears you see is not just what comes out in her eye it's a language and this lady said apostle why would God do this to me and I said no every time we don't understand God we give thanks is something I learned through my own pain. It's not like I, I learned it before I read it in the Bible. Whenever you don't understand God, just give thanks. Why me is not a wise thing. Lord, why is my church not growing? Why did this and that and that happen? You give thanks. I remember comforting that dear lady and I told her something. I said, every time God closes a window, check well, a door is about to open. And I remember when that lady was going to get married. Oh, it was with honor. It was with joy. You know the kind of joy that will make you forget the pain of yesterday. Listen, let me speak to someone. There are many of you who you have not learned to see God in your pain. You have not learned to see God in your challenges. I'm encouraging you tonight. When you look back, don't look at the problems. Continue to look. Mary Magdalene was looking at a graveyard and she saw Jesus there. Jesus is also in the grave. He's not just on the throne. She came to the grave and was looking. Who goes to the grave? Only dead men. There are no living people in the grave. But when you stand through that grave, you can see Jesus looking at you to say, you may have been abused when you were young. You may have gone through all kinds of things, but don't be ashamed of it. I am raising you with an anointing. Tomorrow you are going to have a foundation. One uncle deceived you here and don't worry. And all of a sudden you are healed. You are strengthened and you can rise up and be a blessing. As believers, both our glory and our pains are still weapons that can bring him glory. Is God speaking to someone today? Sometimes I share some of the testimonies of yesteryears, not because I'm stupid. Everybody has his reputation too. I share some of these things and it's amazing how some of these messages comfort some of you. Because if you just see all the things that God is doing today, you may think just because you are anointed, you are shielded from it. Nobody is immune from tears. Jesus wept. Every other person in him will weep too. There are times that life can push you. I've wept at funerals of people here. I have had to comfort people. We have lost loved ones. Things have happened around. But even at that, even when we cannot explain, we still say, Lord, thank you. Lord, thank you. Can you lift your voice in one minute and just say, Lord, thank you. Even in the midst of the pain. In the midst of the pain. Lord, I went through unfavorable things. I trusted a man who disappointed me. I trusted my boss, he disappointed me. Lord, I thought by now I would have graduated and standing before me are five carryovers. I thought I would get first class my last result. I thought I would be promoted and I was driven. But I give you thanks. I give you thanks. I may not understand what you are doing in and through me, but Lord, I know that you do all things. I will sing, I will praise, even in my darkest hour, through the sun. Thank you. 
are some of you here it is your pain that made you to begin to love people yes, sir. you were too innocent and when you see people just complain oh my father could not afford my school fees what an irresponsible father until the day your own father lost him a job and you found out for the first time that dinner could not come and God said, have you now seen that if I don't help a man, it's not just being irresponsible. Your father is responsible. Yet, except the Lord builds a house, they labor in vain. Let me tell you this. My father calls me a young man with gray hair. My experiences in life have added to my experience. Added to my age. That's why you see me respect elderly people. I am not stupid. There are some of you here when you see us honor people, say, What is there? Because your blood is hot. They paid your school fees. They gave you pocket money. You entered 100 level. By the end of 100 level, you have gotten a scholarship. Your result came out 4.5. Your perspective is too innocent to be used. Keep coming. One day something will happen. By the time you graduate and for five years, there's no job. You will now know why people write prayer requests here. For now, you say, ah, what is there about prayer requests every month? It's because everything in your life is paid for. The day your father look at you and say, young man, after this month, as we are clocking 30th of this month, you are packing your load and you are going. And you will think he has an honorarium for you. He will just wave you and say, my old father just did bye bye. And I, the same thing I'm doing for you. And for the first day, you will sleep under a tree. That's the day you open your Bible and say, no, I must get this thing. Yes, sir. Don't waste your pain. Some of you would have entered certain anointings by now if only you could look at God through your pain. There is, the Bible says, for we know. The rest may not know, but we know that all things. How many things? Talk to me. Say all things. All things. Work together. Apostle, what kind of life is this? I graduated since 2013. I've been loving God. There's no work now for me. Is it that I don't serve God? Apostle, I love God. I love the things of God. But not one guy in my whole life, there's no gentleman that has come to say, Ah, you're a beautiful lady. I want to. Am I cursed? <clears throat> it's because you are becoming a mother of nations, not a wife. And so God is saying, I need you to have the kind of compassion that will be required for a mother of nations. Today I can minister to people because every time I want to be wary, there is always something God can use from my past. People say apostle is humble. I'm not humble. It's a revelation of God that has kept me like that. The moment I want to lift up my head, God just has to show me one vision of one night I could not afford Gary. And he said, where, where is the pride coming from? Your past can help you maintain your glory. Your past has something in it that can help you keep your glory. When you see a man of God blessed and consistent and stable, there is nothing that is natural like that. There are many of you, you will not have listened to God. Every time they talk to you, you are stubborn towards instruction. So God allowed you. And for one year, like the prodigal son, you went away from mentorship and instructions and you saw the casualties that it brought to your life and now God comes back again and says can I now help you and you say Lord please I will never leave you again are we together we'll stop here tonight make it part one we have part two there, there, there's something very deep that I want to share I'll share with you next week or whenever whenever it is that we have the opportunity Listen to me, brothers and sisters. I made certain covenants with my life at certain seasons of pain, not luxury. There were things I went through in my life and I vowed to God. I said, Lord, if you ever prosper me, I will not let one person die of hunger in my presence. I would not have said that. If money and all these resources just came cheaply, I may be part of those like you people running your mouth at every family. Irresponsible people. Look how simple it is to prosper. So there are times God can allow you. You go through this. You pray. You fast. No door opens. So that when he blesses you with 10 naira 
and says give that 10 naira here you don't want people to lick your shoes just because of that there are certain anointings there are people who got certain impartations early in life you see that early in life and it made them proud what is there about this in fact right now i can even show that the power of god will move one two three four and they make all kinds of things mismanagement of the anointing then one day god will leave them and you find out for one year it looked like your heavens were closed you go for a meeting you live there asking did god call me in the midst of your pain God begins to show you the visions of the foolishness and the pride. You insulted every man of God because you had more revelation than your local pastor. You insulted him all this, this, this dull reverend doesn't know anything. And God kept watching. When that heaven closed towards you, God will now say, go and meet that reverend for prayer. He's the one who will open your heavens. And you drag yourself in shame like somebody that has finished fighting wrestling. And the reverend looks at you and says, you... I heard you talk nonsense. God said, you better apologize there. When you learn it, like Samson, the anointing comes back again. But this time around, you know the value of the anointing because you believe that you, you are too precious, you won't lose it. You kept reading books that ah, this and that happens. The day it left you, you don't need to ask whether it goes again. You learned a lesson by yourself. There are some of us who were very innocent. We insult every mother. You see somebody's mother insult the mother and say, Kai, this woman said this and that. I sat down near her. Ah, she didn't put any perfume. Kai, what kind of a smelly, you know, this koinonia. And God is saying, no problem. It's because you had a father who was a this and that. All of a sudden, another government will come and they won't give him appointments. And your friends will say, ah, where's our jeep now? He said, no jeep again, no. And then when they leave you like the prodigal son, then you come back to your senses. And the next time God gives you a jeep, you don't just say, come and see jeep. You say, come and see God's faithfulness. It will suddenly become God's faithfulness, no longer jeep. We're going to pray tonight. I don't know what, what pain you may be going through now. And you are saying, Lord, if you called me, why am I going through this? I'm answering you right now. Lord, why is my life like this? And God is saying, I'm bringing glory. You have called me as a kingdom financier. Lord, I've never held 50,000 of my money. And God says, I need to teach you that. Listen, let me tell you. When God called me into the apostolic ministry, there are few challenges of people I didn't go through. How else? Do you relate with people? Are we together? There are times people will bless me and God will ask me to sow it. And when I sow it, I'm alone. And I'm saying, God, what is this? Somebody refused to tighten me. I'm tightening my own heavens. Come and you ask me to carry it. And what is that? And it's amazing how God doesn't answer. There are times that God's silence is a training process. It may not be an attack. He's teaching you how to wait. Lord, will you arise? Based on the Bible studies you did, they say if you call him, he is nigh those who call upon him. Yes, it's true, but he's training you. You teach someone how to call God, he's enjoying an express service with God, and you, the tutor, is there under closed heavens and hazy hearing. Lord, what is this? I've been married for five years, no child. Lord, what I mean, what is the meaning of this? You are calling me into ministry and no child. And then God says, prophesy to all the barren women. Ha, ah, God, what embarrassment is this one again? And he says, do it. He's killing the flesh. You may not know, it's not about a child. God can give you a child even in one week. He's killing the flesh. Tonight, we are going to spend, the way we are going to do this prayer, We'll do a general prayer, but before then, I'm going to give you five minutes. You're going to find any corner or find anywhere. Listen, before you go, overflow one, two, three, just find somewhere. I'd like you to focus and say, Lord, thank you for my pain. I used to hate it. I know that I was raped when I was two years old. I know that I lived alone. I got, I'm the only Christian in my family. And yet, 
I will call on you and it will look like nobody will answer. Lift your voice and pray. You never would have come into the house of the Lord if you were too innocent. There are some of you, you never would have even known that the call of God is upon your life. Lift your voice. Pray. Please be serious tonight. Talk to him in your language. Lord, I thank you. My pain has made me wiser. My pain has made me a woman of compassion. I used to be a heartless woman. I used to be a heartless man. I used to be a very, very uncompassionate man of God. But you have used my disappointment. Now I can look at people and know that they are doing their best. I will insult people again. I used to think ministry was so easy until I carried my anointing and I was surprised that in spite of my being anointed, doors are still closed. Now I know that except God helps a man, it is not the eloquence of speech that can help you. Lord, when I was in the university, I insulted every graduate because I thought they didn't know what they were doing. Now I've been a graduate for 10 years, 20 years, with no job. I now know that if God does not help me, nobody can pray. Lord, show me your glory through my pain. Reveal something in my life through my pain. I've gone through pain. I've gone through disappointment. Lord, I lost my loved ones. I lost my father. I lost my mother. I lost my brothers. It was, and for some of you, it's still a painful experience. But Lord, in the midst of it, there has to be something through my pain that can glorify you. If you never had a spillover, you probably would never be born again. You would be an arrogant graduate. Your promotion was due. Three years now you've not been promoted. Could it be that in that delay, God wants to teach you something? Pray. Oh Lord, let my pain help me know you. Let my challenges help me know you. Give me a new name that you have through this pain. Let my pain not be wasted, oh God. Let me not cry for nothing. If I have cried, let me also see you. If I've been disappointed, let me see you through it.
this is why I can finish service and as tired as I am I will stand here for hours seeing people this is why I spend my life traveling around in spite of the pain this is why I give the way I do it's not just because I'm anointed something has happened to me there is a birthing there is a breaking of the outer man the breaking of that flesh when I went through the dark days in my life they helped me make certain vows to God I will never look down on anybody that's why some of our young ones here that are in ministry usually men of God who go ahead like this to some measure look down on the ones who are coming up and make it look like I would never never do that to anybody no matter how small no matter how little I believe in you we can correct you where you need to be corrected and lift you you know why because I know I've been there listen some of you what you are going through now is not for you is for the sake of those you are being sent to God does not want you to arrive at the place of destiny and not be able to relate to the pain of those who are coming so you pay the school fees by yourself and now you are in final year probably and you are wondering oh Lord where will this school fees come from and then by the time God helps you he now tells you like Peter when you are converted strengthen your brethren the next time you see somebody hungry don't criticize and laugh because you know what hunger means we do not have a high priest who cannot be touched touched with the feelings of our infirmity when I was growing up as a little boy I didn't have too much of uncles and aunties to show me the way of the Lord and love me that's why after service you see all these my children come and run they can match me and do anything I love them the way they are because I want to show them that being an adult is not a cause against children something about your character can only be changed through your pain something about your hardness to the voice of God can only be changed through your pain something about your rebellion to his instructions can only be changed through your pain a sermon will not change it there is something you must go through I'm sorry but it's true sometimes that disappointment God will have the power to stop it but he will leave it he will make sure it does not hurt you to the point where it's unbearable but he will need you to learn something in it it's a painful experience but it's called a circumcision when you circumcise a child that child does not laugh while you are circumcising him but do you stop the circumcision because the child is crying no that's what is happening to you so for some of you right now I wish the prayer will be oh God take away the challenge sincerely for some of you the prayer is Isaiah 43 Lord be with them as they pass through that fire because for some of you you are not coming out of that fire soon that fire is doing something to you I know you will not like me for what I'm saying but I am telling you allow that fire to refine you and you will look and not see pride in your life again allow that fire to refine you and you will look and see the anointing you are admiring on TV is with you in the fire people don't become anointed on the throne they become anointed in the cave of Adulam I want you to pray one serious prayer just one prayer Lord whatever training you are passing me through continue to pass me through until I become like a trophy it's not a dangerous prayer it's a sensible prayer for mature believers God will not kill you no Lord you have spoken to me about prosperity that you are giving me a mantle for wealth and Lord I've seen how money has destroyed people whatever oh god needs to prove my appetite to make me not use money to destroy my life and others work on me lord you told me i will have a level of fame through the anointing and the, the revelatory gifts of the spirit pride is inevitable the tendency for pride is there so lord work on me let that circumcision happen to me
break me, O oh God. Whatever needs to be broken, let it be broken. Whatever needs to be pruned, let it be pruned. Are you praying? Only mature people can pray this prayer. Take away the pride, O oh God. Lord, I don't have a heart of mercy. Use my pain to make me merciful to others. I have a critical spirit. But oh God, through my challenges, give me a heart that loves people. I find people who do not hold my viewpoints in life. Do something in me that grants me compassion. That the next time I hear that something is happening to someone, I will be the first to show love, not to show hate. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If the people who write all these blogs against men of God, if the people who go to families carrying gossips heard this message that I'm preaching to you, they will have enough compassion to know. Are we together? Yes. A gentleman, I'm sure that gentleman is here. He met me a few days. I'm, I'm, I'm saying it because his life is a testimony. Something happened to this guy and he got into a lifestyle that was not the best. And he went to jail. He just came out of prison not too long. And when that guy came out of prison, I mean, everything had gone academically. A whole year had gone ahead of him. And when the gentleman came and met me and said, Apostle, this is what happened. I used to be a thief. I used to steal and I used to do drugs. And so they apprehended me, you know, I was guilty and I went to prison. I looked at him. That gentleman was so rehabilitated. And I looked at him. He said, I'm ready to go and finish up. I said, what level are you? He said, this and that. I looked at him. I said, young man, hold my hands. I love you and I believe in you. And I'm going to do my best to make sure that you catch up with your colleagues and finish. Even if it means covering your school fees, I will do it. I'm not stupid. It's not because I have money. Are we together? That could have been your brother. That could have been your sister. Maybe that could have been me. In a cell. There is nobody I do not believe that God can lift. There is nobody. You see, when you see God trusting a man of God with people, God sees the heart of men first before helping them. When God sees that you have a wicked and a depraved heart that will destroy the destinies of people, you will never be trusted. I preached a message earlier this year, can God trust you? Not can God use you? Yes, he can, but can God trust you? There are people, let me say this with all humility, if they have half the anointing that is on my life, you will have to lick their legs. You see it with the tendencies that are around people. Let me tell you this. While we are still, I'm going to show you. There are still some points. I don't want to go ahead of myself. I will show you how to curb some of these excesses in your life. If you don't create a system by grace of self-supervision against these things, especially pride, pride is a killer. It will shred you into pieces and cover you in the dust of impact. And they will know that once upon a time, there was a mighty man. Once, there are many once upon a times. Many. Alive but dead. I pray to God all the time and say, Lord, please preserve your son. Preserve your testimony. Father, tonight, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Such our hearts, oh God, such our hearts, such our hearts. Let this not just be church alone, such our hearts. And you have granted us wisdom. For many of us who are ashamed of our pain and ashamed of what we are going through or have been taught that what we are going through is necessarily lack of spirituality comfort us by this revelation tonight 
to know that your voice can still be spoken and heard even through our pain teach us to see you in the midst of our challenges and oh god the lessons that we need to learn through pain may we not get out of that realm of pain without learning them these are the lessons that make us spiritual men indeed these are the lessons that make you real to us these are the lessons that make us act as though we are not human beings take away pride give us compassion give us love in the name of jesus christ and i pray that god will bless you that as you meditate on this teaching it will sponsor stability in you that all these things that cause believers to vacillate up and down will not be part of your life you will be grounded you will be established in truth and established in love in the name of jesus christ now give me two minutes and let me make an altar call very quickly please no moving around i have said something that is very serious some of you is from your pain that you came here you went through situations and circumstances that your intellect could not provide a solution for and on account of that god brought you here tonight and i have to give you an opportunity to make it right with jesus you've heard about the things of god you probably may have even laughed about spiritual things but whilst listening to me tonight, the Holy Spirit was speaking to you. Telling you that it's time you made up your mind to be serious with God. To be serious with spiritual things. There are others who are saying, Apostle, sincerely, I, I have given my life to the Lord. But all these attributes of the flesh around my life. Now I'm learning that my life is not an effulgence of the character of the spirit life. You want to join them these two categories of people please don't be ashamed this is a family that loves you passionately overflow one overflow two and the main auditorium you can come out here overflow three you can move to your projector stand and then those by the roadside can join them those online just connect and follow the prayer wherever you are i'm just counting one to five quickly please leave your seat and come koinonia let's honor them a bold decision for jesus you are saying apostle I'm ready to win this war. I'm not going to allow the devil destroy my life. Thank you. Thank you. Koinonia, honor them. It takes a lot of courage to come to Jesus like this. Make your way to him. You're here within a family that loves you, will never condemn you. God gave every one of us a chance. And as his representatives were extending, her, I don't care whether you are a drunkard, I don't care whether you are a smoker, I don't care what you have done or not done. Make your way to Jesus. We love you. He can give you a new beginning. Apostle, I've been very stubborn. Can I join them? Join them quickly. You are welcome. You are welcome. There is a spirit of rebellion in me. Whatever they say not to do is what I find myself doing. Join them. There is always a way out. Apostle, I'm not sure if I'm saved or not. I honestly think I am, but I'm not sure. Join them. Join them and clear every gray area here. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. If you are still coming, please rush quickly. If you are outside and the Lord is speaking to you, join very quickly. Those online, whatever nation of the world, whatever time zone, just connect by faith. And we're about to make a very serious prayer and a declaration that will culminate to a new beginning you will start afresh with god again hallelujah thank you so much brothers and sisters for standing for coming out let me tell you this look up this is a family that loves you we are not people who destroy our wounded soldiers some of you have been in the things of god but here because of the pressures of life you know your life just went haywire and some of you are coming for the first time i know and i see by the spirit that some of you are on drugs some of you are on all kinds of things there's nothing to be ashamed of nothing to be ashamed we are proud of you we will cry with you together we will stand by you until you become what god has ordained for you lift your right hand and say after me sincerely you are not just reciting a poem jesus is here say lord jesus say it again say lord jesus overflow three and those online you're following say lord jesus tonight i have heard your word i need an encounter i declare that you are the son of god i declare that you are my savior you are my lord you are my king you are my friend this night i hand over my entire
entire life to you use it for your glory wash me cleanse me by the blood of Jesus I declare that the power of sin and Satan is broken over my life forever I declare that Jesus is my Lord I'm a child of God I'm born again please keep your hands lifted dear Lord Jesus I thank you for this my precious brothers and sisters those following online in the quietness of their rooms their homes some on their knees crying before you who but you oh God is able to save all that we do as men is to condemn and look down on people but we thank God because you are a friend that sticks closer than a brother I ask oh God that you receive these ones you know their pain you know their pressures you know the things that they go through in the name of Jesus I supply unto them the grace that grants them access to a life of victory in the name of Jesus I declare your sins forgiven and I declare that the Lord himself grants you a new beginning the grace to rise above the limitations of life let it be supplied you a fresh hunger for spiritual things that nothing in this life and nothing in time can take I declare that God impacts it upon you tonight in the name of Jesus Christ amen and amen a big congratulations to you brothers and sisters please look at me I congratulate you follow the gentleman waving his hands there's a gentleman waving his hands and there'll be a group of people to just receive you and welcome you more warmly on our behalf let's honor them koinonia thank you hallelujah praise the Lord let's keep clapping they are going they're on their way going dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message i want you to keep doing something for this man of god our man of god apostle joshua salmon and that is i want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of jesus christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of christianity and then don't forget to like this video don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing jesus i'll see you again bye